Hello? Hello! Hi, how, how are, are you? you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Great. I was hoping, I, I didn't know if I had the right, but it, it seems to, to be accurate. I saw your name is uh, correct, and uh, I, I guess there are not any more Lisa Lemons on the <laughs> email. <laughs> Like I had some trouble finding some of the interviewers on Skype. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, yeah, there's a. I have an unusual name, so it's uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so how are you doing? Uh, you're uh, about to, uh, or I guess you actually already released your uh, new album on August August twenty third. Yeah, exactly. Very exciting for us. <laughs> Right. Now, um, I understand that, that you, before you got into um, Frantic Amber, you were a Danish ballet dancer. Yeah, so I'm from Denmark, uh, and I, I, I have my education from the Royal Swedish Ballet School in Stockholm, which was also how I, I got to Sweden in the first place. <laughs> so it was during that time that I found Frantic Amber as well. And, uh, yeah, it stayed longer than anticipated, but I'm very happy I did. That's awesome. Um, I was just curious how you went from ballet to uh, singing for such a awesome band. Um, you've got, like, four women members, right, and one male? Yeah, exactly. Um, so the uh, drummer is a male and the rest are female. Oh, boy, he must love his job. <laughs> well, we're like a family. We have fun. But yeah, um, so I I started. Uh, I've been singing my whole life and doing music. Uh, started on the piano and then I started saxophone and I did some singing and stuff like that. Like during uh, my my childhood and then when I was around fifteen. I discovered metal and got really into that. So um, uh, while I was in Stockholm. I was because I, I I stopped all musical stuff um, to pursue the, my ballerina dream, so um, I was on on hold there, and I really missed music at the time. So that's why I started to to look around, and I wanted to sing metal. I knew, um, and uh, well, the growling it kind of <laughs> happened the, that way. I was just trying it out. Uh, try, I like to sing along to what I was listening to, and. Um, well, then I, I found Friend of Gamber, and it became a reality, and just, like, really working on how to, to expand my, my vocals and, and get all, all the, the different flavors and stuff. So it's been, it's been a long journey and, and very um, uh, experimental and full of learning. So it's been really great to, to do that, and it's, it's quite natural for me uh, like from ballet to metal, it's like uh, yeah. <laughs> I like contrast. I have different interests, so it's it's quite like natural, I would say. Is that you doing the growling? I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, that sounds like a man, like a deep. You must have a deep. I mean, hearing you talk now, you don't sound like you have a very deep voice. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, but when you sing. I haven't seen you, you know, I, I, I'm listening to the album and I'm like, is that really, I was like, that sounds like a guy. That's such a deep voice from your natural voice. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a totally different uh, vocalizing style. It's uh, <laughs> quite different from singing clean or, or speaking, but yeah, that's definitely me. Wow. I'm like, I was like, wow, that's just, I got to ask her because I just, I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. Well, it takes uh, a lot of practice, so <laughs> that's for sure. Right. Um, I bet you, um, with your singing a lot, you get a sore throat from, from growling so much. Oh, no. Uh, it's all about technique and, and, and airflow and, and, and doing uh, 
like it's it's the same as as clean vocals, like all the mechanisms in in breath control and uh, how how everything works. But it's uh, it's kind of like you're making an effect with your voice. So it, it's uh, on top of that. <laughs> so it's kind of finding out how to do that in a healthy manner. It's not just going out and screaming your lungs out. Yeah. Yeah, that would damage for sure. But right. it's a whole technique and. and, and lot of nuances to find how to do this without going over to yeah uh, just hurting your throat but did you have any uh, vocal training before this i took some singing lessons when i was young uh, and i was just singing my whole life so it's quite natural but no it's a trial and error do it yourself (laughs) kind of thing because there weren't any schools for that when i started uh, they popped out quite a lot of, of, of coaches now, which is cool. Yeah. Um, and I even taught some myself. So it's um well, it's kind of and also of course uh, internet helps to to investigate how are the people doing and what they're saying and stuff like that. So it's just uh, an ongoing research and journey and also just getting to know your own instrument and what works for me and 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 how I can make it better and more and wider you know yes i understand it's wow (laughs) (laughs) well thank you (laughs) yeah i was like i can't i i don't know what to say just wow yeah it's a pleasure to hear (laughs) now um give me a little bit of history of um how this all came together um frantic amber well it started off as a project from the the founder, um, Maria, she uh, wanted to play metal, well, mainly with other girls, and was uh, trying out different styles and sounds and members and stuff like that. But it wasn't until 2010, uh, where I also joined, that uh, we figured out and, and found like, okay, we want to do this. We want to do a metal like death metal. We want growling mainly as vocal style and uh, a little bit of clean singing here and there and stuff like that. And then uh, have like a harder guitar sound and, and extreme drumming so it was kind of like there the band formed you know um, and then we released an EP and went on stage as, as fast as possible that's the whole whole thing what, why we're doing this is to play live um, and then there have been some member changes and stuff like that since also Burning Inside our first album um which took also a while because we were doing so many things at the same time uh, and we're still on sign so we're still in the band uh, managing everything ourselves um, so yeah uh, and then we got back to writing once the, the new lineup was stable in 2015 and uh, yeah now we're here today <laughs> with the new album and uh, Maria she she retired uh, she she uh, wanted to focus on our family so uh, and Mila joined after her after so yeah now we're just uh, looking for the, the future to support this album and get out playing live as much as possible now from what I understand um, you got to um, play the um, WA festival but you yeah. won that because you did a uh, metal battle. Uh, tell me about that. Yeah, so this is a while ago. We, we won the, the Swedish Javakin metal battle um, in, in Stockholm, and that meant that we got to play the finals in, at Back in Open Air. So, um, yeah, we played a, <laughs> a huge show there in, in the tent uh, filled with people. It was just amazing to, to experience and the energy in the crowd and, and being in this very professional uh, festival. And, and it's the, I think it's the biggest one in Europe, actually. So it was a, it was a pleasure, it was an honor, and, and totally insane. It was over so quickly. It was kind of like I blinked and that was that, but I had so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then you, you won a um, uh, TV... Um, what was the, the national TV at the prestigious um, P3 yeah, P3 Gold <laughs> Gold Awards? Yeah, I was like, wow. So, how did that happen? Yeah, um, uh, I, I guess we got contacted through 
I'm not sure because uh, that was Maria that she had the the contact at the time, but but it, uh, we were chosen to play on the show as a guest, and uh, also with song and stuff like this. And so we we traveled there and we were on set, which was really cool. They had this huge uh, like arena type um, place uh, with a huge stage and a catwalk and everything and cameras everywhere. So a uh, really professional crew and. and um, that was the first time I tried having in ear on stage, <laughs> which was kind of an experience. Um, and uh, also, uh, yeah, going through the plan and stuff like that, it was really cool. And then we played live uh, in front of, uh, well, when the show aired, and we played live on national TV in front of, like, a, yeah, everyone was watching. I guess there was a lot of people watching and then everyone in the arena. So that was really cool. Too. And the clip is on YouTube too, if, if people want to check it out. Wow, that must have been um, kind of like a stage fright. What, did, weren't you like, oh my god, oh, oh I'm, you know, oh my god? <laughs> I just can't imagine <laughs> that being in, on TV in front of thousands of people, and it's like, wow. Yeah, it was uh, really like, of course, nerves are always in play, but it's just, it's a part of it, and. Once I get up on stage, it kind of just melts away, and I'm in the moment, and I'm doing my thing, and it was, it was such a great feeling. I was really in the zone also at that day too. So once we started, I was just like, oh! <laughs> 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 no, yeah, that was really cool uh, to to experience that, and then how how it's done on TV, you know. So yeah, it was a great honor. Wow. So you've come out like it seems like you just as soon as you created this this you know EP you just like boom all of a sudden you're just out there and winning all these awards and being on TV and everything is like it seems like it's kind of fast for you guys. Well, yeah, we've been around for almost ten years, so or since 2010. So uh, in that time, yeah, we've done as much as possible as we could and. and yeah, I released the EP, and then we released uh, Burning Inside, the f- first full-length album, which was really exciting also to, to distribute, get distribution uh, worldwide. Um, and then new Bella Tricks here. Also, it's very exciting t- to continue evolving, because I, or I can, anyway, see and hear and feel how far we've come since the, the beginning, you know, since we started. So it's, it's really cool to see how our music has evolved and how we as performers have evolved and it's just very exciting and I hope to to get out and play as many shows as possible and as big shows as possible that's just a dream now um tell me about this new album Bellatrix um how did you come up with the name and why well Bellatrix uh, translates into female warrior uh from Latin Uh uh-huh so uh it's from there. It's because uh, the the album is a concept album about female warriors through time, through history that actually lived and actually fought. Um, so a lot of research went into it when I was writing the lyrics because uh, I couldn't write from my own head. You know, I was writing about or from the perspective of these women, and it was very interesting and inspiring to read about because there are so many that like we don't get t- taught that in history class. We don't really hear about it in the media. So it was kind of like a tribute to that, and also, yeah, to to, to bring forth uh, these badass women that actually did amazing things and fought for well, their home and what they believed in, their lives and everything. So it's a it was a cool concept to bring forth, and um, it was a very rewarding experience to write the music. And also, uh, each track features one of these women. And uh, the music also is tailored to, uh, like, having some uh, other instruments and, and, and samples and atmospheric symphonic stuff that uh, is influenced from that culture, from that country where they're from. So, for instance, Yoshitai sounds has uh, flutes and uh, these instruments, like, oriental sounding instruments and, and stuff like that. And we have some Viking horns on the uh, Nagasa and... Uh, just different kind of approaches to, to trying to tailor and making an aura around 
this warrioress and and what the song is about represents mm -hmm. uh, as well as making it you know come together as a whole um as an album so yeah it was very interesting to to try that this this time so do you do all the uh writing on the lyrics or do you um get help from other members is it a collaborative effort um, so I write the lyrics, I do the research and write the lyrics, and then we do feedback. So, and we also had a copy editor on, on the on the overall um, CD. So, to make sure that uh, what I was writing came across, you know, so other uh -huh. people know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, it was it, it, we always do that. Also with the music, like we uh, some some uh, or, um, a specific person writes, uh, and then we we iterate and we feedback and we, then. Like I, I, with the lyrics, I go back and then uh, take the feedback. And okay, I rewrite it or change something, and we discuss and again. And so until we're happy with it, everyone. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good exercise also for me as a lyric writer uh, to to do that. And um, I think this album is a, a totally different thing for me because it's the first time I write about like this concept or, and, and historically <laughs> and, and stuff like this. So um, it was a good, uh, really good uh, growth for me, I think, uh, for writing. Well, that's awesome. So uh, now uh, what are your plans? Are you going to be out uh, touring um, with this new album, playing all these new badass songs you got? Yeah, of course. We're... We're booking shows now, and uh, well, actually next weekend we're playing in Czech Republic, <laughs> so it's going to be really cool, and uh, we're going to add as many as concerts to the roster as possible, and we hope, really hope to some, someday to come to the U.S., in South America, Asia, just everywhere. We want to take over the world. <laughs> well, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we have a lot of requests coming in from everywhere, and, and we would love to go, so we just trying to find a booker that can make that happen. Um, we we're supposed to be on a five-week tour in the U.S. this summer, but it fell through. <gasps> oh, no! <laughs> yeah, it was a shame. And these things happen, I guess, quite often. And that's just life, you know. But I hope that we can find something for the future because we want to do a longer tour if we're going to go all the way um, across the Atlantic, you know, so get around the u.s is a big country <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's yeah, definitely uh, in our plans and we want to get out and play as much as possible to uh, also support bellatrix and yeah just get back on the road yes i'd love to see you. i hope you can, i hope you can um come in 2020 do a yeah, summer festival awesome. yeah get out a tour with somebody yeah definitely so where can people get your uh, new album uh, you can go to our webpage, uh, web shop. It's uh, franticamber.bandcamp.com, where we have the CD and the vinyl, um, and also a new T-shirt print, and also, of course all our, our burning inside stuff from that cycle. And uh, we ship worldwide, so just go there, and we would be happy to accept any any support you can get. Well. Thank you for taking a few minutes. I know you're busy. You've got other interviews to do, so I'll let you go. And I hope to see you soon, and I look forward to um, catching uh, your new videos that are on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Check them out. Thank you so much for having us, and I uh, hope to talk to you again in the future. Great. Have a great day now. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.